having a good week so far? All right. That's maybe a few of you. <laughs> if you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, saving, 
He's a prison shaking Savior if you got chains. He's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of the day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know that just ain't right. But there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a pain taker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can't feel it somebody testify testify if you can't feel it if you receive it if you can't feel it somebody testify you got pain he's a pain taker He's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Shout of praise. Somebody testify. Tom, if you could just give me a little bit of background there. So, today is Reformation Sunday. And what does that mean? Some, some people might know. I hope all of you know, <laughs> since we're in a Lutheran congregation. But um, Reformation Sunday is all... Thank you very much. She's changing my batteries. Um, <laughs> I'm running low here. Um... But Reformation Sunday is all about, you know, breaking the chains and, you know, it just kind of relying on grace and grace alone. That's what Luther did. That's when he wrote the 95 Thesis. And, um, and then he basically got excommunicated from the church and he had a price on his head and everything. But he did it all for the sake of what he believed in, which was the right thing. There was a, such a time in that period to where there was so much, you know, just kind of everybody was um, just kind of taking the word of God and, and not making it true. So he took it upon himself to go and, well, actually not upon himself. He was given that inclination from God. That was a God-given thing. So that way everybody else could have religious freedom. So that's what we're celebrating today. So... Just keep that in mind as we're worshiping. By the way, y'all can be seated. You 
Join me in prayer. You are the breath in our lungs, and Lord, as we have the opportunity to hear from your word today on this Reformation Sunday, I just pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds, and that you would fill Pastor Ron with your spirit as he speaks your word to your people this morning. Be with him in the message that you've laid on his heart. It would be a blessing to us as we receive and hear that message through our ears. That it would change our hearts and our lives. As the promise in your word is found, your word never comes back empty. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, kids, you have the opportunity to get up right now. Stretch your legs a little bit. Go on out. There's a special message prepared for you. Pastor Ron, you are up. We're going to do a scripture reading here. And... You're going to be doing it, right, Nick? That's All so. right. From Psalms. I'm not very good at reading, so. <laughs> so. Um, so we had a little bit of an audible today. It's, uh, it's not. Actually, no. We're good. <laughs> Psalm 46, 1 through 11. Uh, and that's going to be page 471 of your Bible. It reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very pre- present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not go, we will not fear through, not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though it is, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms trotter, 
totter, excuse me. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. Breaks the bow and shatters the spear, excuse me. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is good news. This is a great news. Thank you, Nick. Okay. All the kids are out, right, for children's message. Um, Later on, we're going to have the opportunity to uh, uh, commune fifth and sixth graders. So many of you are guests here today because of that, and we're very blessed by that. Um, Actually, I'm going to mention communion in this sermon. Uh, It's very important to us. You know, we are word sacrament ministry. Um, So the sacrament of Holy Communion is very, very special. We take it very seriously. Let's start out with this way, though. Um, Where do you go when you're afraid? Uh, Where do you go when you're under attack? Where do you go when you feel like the whole world is going to overwhelm you? You know, today we have many, many threats against us. Uh, It might be sickness. It might be even the threat of death. You know, the weather, you look at the weather, it's gone crazy, it's gone wild. Right now we're in a nice little special spell here where it's cooling off, but uh, you see what's going on around the world with the typhoons, tornadoes, hurricanes. Um, Amazing. It seems like the weather's gone wild and people have gone wild too, a little crazy. All right? Um, Some might be thinking that the end is coming soon. I believe we should always be ready. I don't know if it'll be today, tomorrow, or a thousand years from now, but it seems like things are getting crazy. I find myself when I watch the news, and maybe you do too, saying, that's crazy. That's crazy. Huh? I mean, when you watch things, current events, you're like, that's crazy. A lot of these things just seem to come against us as threats to our personhood, our livelihood, um, who we are as a a people, a nation, um, all of those threats. But as Nick just read, Psalm 46, we know that there's a place we can go to. In fact, there's a person we can go to when we feel this threatenedness. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And then verse 11 says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Martin Luther wrote a hymn called The Mighty Fortress is Our God based on this Psalm 46. And uh, in the earlier service, we sang it. It's a very traditional hymn. But I want you to open up your hymn books. We don't do this very often, not in this service. (laughs) But open up your hymnals. It's hymn number 657. 657. Um, And it has some amazing words in it about uh, this Psalm 46 and in fact, yeah, this is, this is the hymn that came out of uh, Luther's life uh, as he was relying on God at, as his fortress and strength in some very, very difficult times, which I'll talk about in a minute. But hymn 657, let's just read it together, okay? A mighty fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation glorious. The old satanic foe has sworn to work us woe with craft and dreadful might. He arms himself to fight. On earth he has no equal. Second verse. No strength of ours can match his might. We would be lost, rejected. But now a champion comes to fight whom God himself elected. You ask who this may be? The Lord of hosts is he. Christ Jesus, mighty Lord. God's only son adored. He holds the field victorious. Though hordes of devils fill the land, all threatening to devour us, we tremble not unmoved, we stand. They cannot overpower us. Let this world's tyrant rage. In battle we'll engage. His might is doomed to fail. God's judgment must prevail. One little word subdues him. 
God's word forever shall abide. No thanks to foes who fear it, for God himself fights by our side with weapons of the Spirit. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever. Wow, that is filled with faith. That is filled with hope. Even though uh, the world and all that's uh, going on wrong with it when in his time is there, he still knows God is his refuge and strength. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> still fighting a cold. That's part, of the, that's part of the battle, right? When you're sick, right? That's part of the battle we face. Luther said this about music, and I think it's a wonderful uh, testimony to why we sing so much, why we enjoy music so much. He said this, Next to the word of God, music deserves the highest praise. She is a mistress and governess of those human emotions which control men or more often overwhelm them. Whether you wish to comfort the sad, to subdue frivolity, to encourage the despairing, to humble the proud, to calm the passionate, or to appease these, these people full of hate, what more effective means than music can you find? The power of music. And so Luther wrote many, many, many hymns, okay, in his lifetime. His most famous, of course, is this one, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. So today I want to look at um, uh, this, this, this hymn based on Psalm 46, the Word of God, and I want to kind of share with you what was going on in Luther's life. What was happening back in the 1500s that would pro kind of provoke him to, uh, to listen to the Spirit and, and write this amazing music? First of all, A Mighty Fortress, uh, many people think is a battle hymn of the Reformation. I mean, it's got a lot of words in there that sound like they're very militant. Um, it's one of the most translated hymns in, in, in the world. 200 translations have been made to this, this amazing hymn. Um, people don't realize, though, that it was never, uh, ever celebrated during Luther's lifetime. All right? The Reformation wasn't celebrated, not until well after. Um, therefore, the hymn wasn't written to, write, to celebrate Reformation. It was uh, written to really celebrate something much deeper than that. In fact, God's comfort for all people. So just a little bit of history, it was on October uh, 31st, 1517, that Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the church door in Wittenberg. He wanted to provoke a debate, debate with the Roman Catholic Church because he saw the abuses that were happening and he wanted to, uh, to really right the wrongs that were there. So um, a mighty fortress uh, we know remarkably little about, actually. Um, the earliest hymnal in which it, was, uh, which it was appeared was 1533. So we know it had to be written before that. Most people think it was written be between 1528, uh, no, 15, yeah, 1527 and 1528. So, um, and we do know what was going on in Luther's life back then, okay? I think great music is not written out of a void. It comes out of the heart, comes out of the life of the composer. So um, let me tell you a little about this, this time in his life. People describe it as the darkest days of Luther. Um, now during those dark days, it wasn't written to be a, a battle hymn. It was written, as he wrote on the top of the sheet music in 1529, a hymn of comfort. A hymn of comfort. Not a battle hymn, but a hymn of comfort. So we do know that about uh, uh, him. It was written on one of these pieces of sheet music. Um, he intended it to bring comfort to people like himself. So let me tell you what was going on in his life. This is, this is amazing. In 1527, August of 1527, one of the people who followed Luther's teachings was martyred, was killed because of his following of Luther and the teachings of Luther. That, that, that happened to many people. Anybody who went up against the Roman Catholic Church, including Luther, uh, were branded, uh, branded as heretics and were in, in threat for their lives. So uh, that was hard for Luther to see people following the faith and then, and then being killed for it. And then in the fall of 1527, a plague, a bubonic plague, broke out in his home uh, city of Wittenberg. If you know about the Black Death, it was horrible. Now, a lot, lot earlier than that, they had a widespread epidemic throughout Europe. Now, this broke out again in just Wittenberg. So here these, uh, these people are suffering through this black death, and that that's, that's was terrible for everybody there in Wittenberg. Um, so he writes about his life um, as coming through temptation. 
Temptation meaning in German things like anxiety, doubt, fear, suffering, or terror in a person's life. Um, for instance, in December 1527, Luther's daughter, Elizabeth, was born as a sickly child. And then in May 1528, she died. So Luther and his family were struggling through this, this uh, prolonged death of this tiny baby. You can imagine Luther spent hours on his knees calling out to God for deliverance, for, for healing, and finally she died. <clears throat> he talked about it as, as this temptation where he was mentally and, and spiritually fatigued. He was underneath a cross of Christ suffering. But he took comfort in the, in the word of God. He took comfort in the Psalms, like Psalm 46. He trusted the promises of God no matter what. Besides the challenges that were there because of the physical um, uh, situations, um, he also had real struggles with his church. You see, from 1517, when he nailed the, the, the 95 theses on the church door in Wittenberg, and 1525, um, he was going up against the Roman Catholic Church, okay? Um, and he saw the abuses, and he was being persecuted for it. Um, but then from 1525 onward, uh, where people did come away from the false teachings and, and followed the true teachings of the Bible, all of these other struggles came up um, with other um, followers of, of the Bible, even people who were friends of Luther all of a sudden went on the attack. So um, Luther felt that his family, his reputation, his work for the Reformation, that his entire existence was at stake. So um, this... This mighty fortress is our God was so important to him. He uh, was going up against the Pope, yes, in Roman Catholicism. But when he wrote the hymn, other groups also that had broken away from Rome were starting to argue and fight over what this new understanding of the Bible really meant. Um, some people, for example, questioned whether pastors were even necessary for the church feeling that anybody could preach, anybody could get up and, and lead, anybody could get, get up and offer the, the word of God and the sacraments. There was no, to be no differentiation. Um, some believe that the word of God didn't hold to the truth that, that infants should be baptized, which had been the practice of the church forever. Always infants had been baptized, but no, we're not going to do that. We can't understand that mystery, so therefore we reject it. And the most divisive argument in the church really had to do with the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. It's called the Sacramentarian Controversy. For 1,500 years, the church had believed and understood and confessed that Christ is truly present in the bread and the wine, that he's really there physically. But other reformers like Zwingli argued against that, and then they uh, really argued about one word. It's amazing. It came down to one word. People argued about the word, this is my body, this is my blood. In fact, Zwingli reinterpreted it to say, this symbolizes my body. This symbolizes my blood. They argued that it was impossible for Jesus to put his body and blood on many altars at the same time. Still others argued that because Jesus' body was in heaven, it could not be on earth too. They rejected the mystery of the Lord's Supper. Several hundred denominations or differentiations, interpretations uh, came about because of that argument. And Luther saw that correct interpretation of the word as really important because he felt it was a direct threat to the proclamation of the whole word of God, the whole counsel of God, and the gospel of God. He believed that the literal words of Jesus needed to be confessed and defended. So... Luther argued that there was nothing more true or certain or powerful than the Word of God. So the Word of God is the mighty fortress that he proclaims. It's the battle between uh, Luther and, and the sac sacramentarians. The Lord's Word was the trusty shield, and that was to defend against the enemy, the error that was going up against the church. And the evil foe was using deceit and deep guile, he says, to undermine the words of Christ. So in the stanza three, which we just read a minute ago, the hymn says, though devils all the world should fill. Luther truly believed that he was living in the last days 
because of the preaching of the gospel and how the world was going up against it. He was preaching about grace through faith. That's the way we're saved, only by grace through faith. That was clearly taught in the scriptures and controversy after controversy after controversy came up about it. He felt that the world was full of devils undermining God's holy word. So the stanza concludes in that, in that hymn, one little word, word can fell him. One little word can fell the devil. One little word can push and, and push the devil back. And in the case of the controversy of the Lord's Supper, the little word that can fell the devil is, is the word is. This is my body. This is my blood. And kids, you were taught that as you're about to receive the Lord's Supper. This is Christ's body. This is Christ's blood. It doesn't just symbolize it. He's there, present, physically in that meal for you and for me. The hymn concludes by confessing that the word of God will remain. It's going to last. It's going to prevail. Even if people are not thankful for it, even if people reject it, the word of God is going to prevail. In Luther's day, there was the real danger that he could lose his life, lose his possessions, his reputation, and his family. Nevertheless, he confidently declared, declared that the victory has been won. The kingdom is ours forever. So Luther's hymn really is one of comfort and hope. I don't know what you guys are going through. Everybody goes through stuff. Temptations, trials, distress, anxiety, fear. But this hymn is a hymn of comfort in the midst of those trials and temptations and the strife, even in the church. You know, my understanding has gone deeper as I studied this, as I learned the history about it. I think it was, I thought it was just a, you know, like a, like a rallying cry for the Christian church, you know, a mighty fortress is our God. But actually, it's there to bring us comfort in the midst of the troubles of the world. Rather than finding a, a single event that encouraged Luther to write this hymn, there were multitudes of things pressing in on him. Everything was at stake. And yet he went back, he went back to God. He said, God is a mighty fortress. He is our refuge in our time of trouble, a very present help in time of need. And that's a good word for you and I today. Yeah, it was in the 1500s, but it's today in 2018 just as much. Rely on him, run to him. He is our refuge. He is our fortress in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may God's peace, that peace that surpasses all our understanding, guard and keep your hearts and lives through faith in Jesus. Amen. Sing one more time about that amazing grace. How about it? Of sin and darkness This love is mighty And so much stronger The King of glory The King above all kings Who shakes the whole earth With holy thunder And is as breathless In awe and wonder The King of glory The King above all kings this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me To order, who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the king of glory, the king of glory, who moves the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the king of glory, the king above all kings. This 
is amazing grace. Oh, 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 this is unfailing love. Oh, 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 that you would take my place. Oh, 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 that you would bear my cross. Oh, 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 you lay down your life. Oh, 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 that I would be set free. How about it? Is he worthy, y'all? Worthy is the lamb you were slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. you would take my place, oh, 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 that you would bear my cross, oh, 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 you lay down your life, oh, 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 that I would be set free, oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Spread the news to the world in Jesus' name.